Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, through all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Stephen, Bishop in the Church of God, on behalf of the clergy and people of the Diocese of Milwaukee, we present to you Esther and Henry to be ordained a priest in Christ's holy Catholic Church. If she been selected in accordance with the canons of this church, and you do, do you believe her manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We can certify to you that she has satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe her to be qualified for this sort. Will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so, and I solemnly declare that I do believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God, and to contain all things necessary to salvation. And I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Episcopal Church. Please sign the declaration. Dear friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Esther for ordination to the sacred priesthood. Therefore, if any of you know of any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Esther be ordained a priest? It is. We will hold her in this ministry. We will. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. God of Father, have mercy on us. God of Son, have mercy on us. God of Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault in the day of your coming. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of your church and their vocation and ministry, that they may serve you in a true and godly life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Stephen, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be filled with your love, may hunger for your truth, and may thirst after righteousness. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Esther, those priests in your church, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that you may faithfully fulfill the duties of this ministry, Build up your church and glorify your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you may be sustained and encouraged to persevere to the end. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For her family, that they may be adorned with all Christian virtues. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our visions may cease. And that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness that may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, 
that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And I also be with you. Let us pray. God on the holy mount revealed the chosen witnesses, your well beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured, and reigned in white and distant. Mercifully grant that we may deliver from this quiet of this world, but by faith we hold the thing in his beauty. With you, O Father, and you, O Holy Spirit, lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God, be changed will power you from life, who favored the honor of whole church that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know the things which were being cast down are being raised up, and things which have grown old are being made new. And that all things be brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hands, Moses did not know that the skin on his face shone because he had been talking to God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin on his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken to him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin on his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. The word of the Lord. The Let us be in unison, Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let, Let the people tremble. tremble. He, he is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The, the Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness today. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses is here among his priests. Stand upon those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of the cloud. 
they got out his testimonies and the decree was given. The Lord our God, who answered them indeed, you were God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the grace of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the holy one. A reading from the second letter of Peter. I think it is right, as long as I am in this body, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but we had been eyewitnesses to his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord.
In Kafka's story, the main character, Gregor Zonzo, remains the person he was in that physical sense. But on the outside, well, he's now an enormous insect. In the case of Jesus, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Like Gregor Zonzo, the change was one that could be seen. But unless today's ordination goes differently than others I have experienced, we will not have a physical metamorphosis or transfiguration, but we will have a change all the same. A change that in many ways will be just as dramatic as turning into a giant insect. For a few moments, Esther will have hands on the other, and she will be changed into something new, an ordained priest in Christ, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Or if you like it, the word of Thomas Aquinas, this change is not like natural changes, but is entirely supernatural and affected by God's power alone. Esther will be the same person, but will also be different, and will be tasked with bringing the gospel to the world in new and unique ways. And so what are those new and unique ways? What is it that the ordained priest is asked to do? Well, there's a couple of different answers to this question. Let's start with the most popular one, and what, for lack of a better term, I would call the help wanted description. Sometime, probably in the 1970s, a job description was crafted by a committee for clergy, and that job description has become something of the platonic form which all church help wanted ads, regardless of denomination, strive to emulate. It basically says that such and such a church is seeking clergy who will grow the church, engage the youth, something helpful with the budget. They don't always come out and say the last thing, but it's there all the same. Churches believe that they have the perfect plan, and all they need is someone who got the right juju when they were ordained to make it 1956 all over again. But despite what churches believe, this isn't the world in which they're going. Esther, you've been around me long enough to hear my rant about how I wish the 1950s had ever happened. Because everyone in the church is convinced, like some enlightened age watchmaker, all that we need to do is turn the right knob or tighten the right spring, and it will all return again. But it won't. But fortunately, that's not even what God calls us to do. This job description is not God's job description. God calls us to be good and faithful witnesses in the context of the powers that he gives us in ordination. Maybe the things we do will follow the desires of the church help on to that, and maybe they won't. But whatever happens, we must be sure that we are following the correct scorecard. The world will ask us if we delivered the goods, but God will ask if we were good and faithful servants. I was reading the last chapter of 1 Corinthians the other day, and was struck by how small the church must have been at the time. Paul names specific people from other places and assumes that this congregation in Corinth is familiar with them. He doesn't talk about the ASA in Ephesus or the new youth camp in Galatia, but rather talks about specific people doing specific things. That's what ministry invites us into. It invites us into specific people's lives to bring the gifts that God has entrusted us with. We cannot quantify much of what we do in some metric. Most items won't show up on the Episcopal Church's website under the data tab. But, as Princess Leia on one grandma's carpet, the more you tighten your grip, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. The more we have gripped the 1970s job description, the less has actually happened. Maybe it's time to grip off of something else. Maybe it's time to get back to basics. Which brings us to the second description, that being God's description. If you search the Bible to find what God expects from the ordained, there's not a whole lot. Much of it is advice for everyone, like what the other prophet Micah, who tells us to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with the Lord. But with a little work, we find snippets here and there. We have Christ's instructions to cure the sick, to baptize, and to do this in remembrance of me. All great and important things, which in a few moments, God will be giving you gifts to do as well. There's one gift that I really want to focus on, 
And it comes from both Jesus and the prayer book, so you know it's legitimate. <laughs> in John's Gospel, Jesus says, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And to see what Jesus means, let's go to that most theological of places, the rubrics of the Book of Common Prayer. Before the absolution of sins is given, we read in the rubrics, the priest alone stands and says, and then the absolution is read, and then following that, we have this caveat to be used in case the priest is not present. It states, the deacon or lay person using the preceding form remains kneeling and substitutes us for you and our for your. Think of that, Esther. Today you move from saying us to you. You're no longer saying forgive us, but rather that you are forgiven. Christ is giving you the power to forgive the sins of others. As I get older and watch the problems of the world, I'm more and more struck by how much people need this sacrament of forgiveness. And while it's not a good idea to get in the business of ranking sacraments, I think this one may be the one that the world is screaming for right now. We need forgiveness. I don't want to give my two cent psychoanalysis, but we live in a world that cannot and will not forgive. We dig up a ten-year-old tweet that someone made when they were 15 years old and then tell ourselves that this is a bad person. A world without forgiveness is a world where there can be no growth and no change. So as you go into the world of the priest, remember all the new powers you have, and especially remember what the one Christ died for, the forgiveness of sins. When we ask what ordination is all about, it can be a little hard to describe because it's not transfiguration. It may not be overtly visible, but here is the thing. Regardless of what we may see, we know that we are entrusted by God with things that lay people are not entrusted with. And that's a very serious responsibility. Esther, I know you're going to be a wonderful priest. I know you will do all the things you're supposed to do and do them very well. The best advice that I can give you is to be faithful to God. Use your new powers to help to heal this world. The results may not readily be applied to a spreadsheet. They will be the things that really matter. Christ's main mission in the Incarnation was in many ways the mission to fix the things that could not be seen. To not have the past define us. To show people that they are a new creation of God, not defined by what came before. He sought to remove the invisible past as far as the east is from the west. So maybe it's appropriate that you're not transfigured, because you're called to fix the things unseen. So it seems best to do the powers that remain unseen. Today, I say you will be changed, not in a visible way, but that's okay. Because so much of the brokenness in this world is not seen either. Offer the world the gift that only you can give through the power of Christ, a new beginning, through the removal of sins. Go into the world preaching and letting people know that they are Christ's own this day. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, He God and not made, of one being with the Father, through Him all things are made, cross and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is 
seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. My sister, the church is the family of God, the body of Christ, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. All baptized people are called to make Christ known as Savior and Lord, and to share the renewing of his world. Now you are called to work as a pastor, priest, and teacher, together with your bishop and fellow presbyters, and to take your share in the councils of the church. As a priest, it will be your task to proclaim by word and deed the gospel of Jesus Christ, and, in, and to fashion your life in accordance with his precepts. You are to love and serve the people among whom you work, caring alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. You are to preach, declare God's forgiveness to dependent sinners, pronounce God's blessing, to share the administration of holy baptism, the celebration of the mysteries of Christ's body and blood, and perform the other ministrations entrusted to you. In all that you do, you are to nourish Christ's people from the riches of His grace, and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. My sister, do you believe that you are truly called by God and His Church to this priesthood? I believe I am so called. You now, in the presence of the Church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility. I do. We respect and be guided by the pastor direction and leadership of your bishop. I will. Be diligent in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures, and seeking the knowledge of such things as may make you a stronger and more able minister of Christ. I will. You endeavor so to minister the Word of God and the sacraments of the new covenant, that the reconciling love of Christ may be known and received. I will. You undertake to be a faithful pastor to all who are called to serve, laboring together with them and with your fellow ministers to build up the family of God. I will. You do your best to better your life and that of your family, in accordance with the teachings of Christ, so that you be a wholesome example to your people. I will. You persevere in prayer, both in public and in private, asking God's grace both for yourself and for others, offering all your labors to God for the mediation of Jesus Christ, the sanctification of the Holy Spirit. I will. The Lord who has given you the will to do these things, give you the grace and power to perform them. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire, and light and with the left of fire. Thou, the anointing Spirit, art who dost thy sevenfold gifts impart. Thy blessed unction from above is comfort, life, and fire of love. Enable with perpetual light the dullness of our blinded sight. Anoint and cheer our soiled face with the abundance of thy grace. Keep far our foes, give peace at home, where thou art God and the will to come. Teach us to know the Father's Son, and be of both to be but one, that through the ages all along, this may be our greatest song. Praise to thy eternal merit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God and Father of all, we praise you for your infant love and calling us to be a holy people in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus our Lord, who is the image of your eternal and invisible glory, the firstborn among many brethren in the head of the church. We thank you that by his death he has overcome death, and we send him to heaven and his poor is gifts abundantly upon the people. May his some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, 
some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry and the building up of his body. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, give your Holy Spirit to Esther, fill her with grace and power, and make her a priest in your church. May she exalt the Lord in the midst of the people, offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, boldly proclaim the gospel of salvation, and rightly merge the sacraments of the new covenant. Make her a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Grant that in all things she may serve without reproach, that your people may be strengthened in your name, glorified in all the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This Bible, the sign of the authority given you to preach the word of God and to administer his holy sacraments. Do not forget the trust committed to the priest of the Church of God. Amen. My sister Rob, greet the new priest. Well, welcome everybody on this um, unusual and still magnificent day, and we welcome Esther to be, as a colleague and a priest in the church. Uh, my name is Kevin Carroll, and I have the privilege of serving as the dean here at All Saints. And as the bishop washes his hand and prepares to celebrate the Eucharist, I would remind you that normally during this time in the service we take up a collection. And it's a tradition at ordinations that the collection goes to the new priest's discretionary fund. Priests use this money to help people in ways that they may not have access to funds in other ways. And the need is always much greater than, than funds available. So if you would like to contribute to Esther's new um, discretionary fund, please send checks to All Saints Cathedral. You can also hit donate on our website and we will make sure that funds collected for a discretionary fund get passed along to her. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because of the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts. Give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Who is in the houses? Bless us as we come to the name of the Lord. Who is in the houses? Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also. May faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people. God.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacrament. We pray that Esther may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with him may serve you now, and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Esther, priest in the Church of God, bless the people. May Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be God.